Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you all, and good afternoon. It is an honor to be invited here, and it's an honor to speak, although I've learned it is better to listen. I did spend part of yesterday listening at the Native American graduation ceremony, which was beautiful. I was honored to do that. And again today, I'd like to hear from you. I am glad for one reason that we're indoors instead of outdoors, because in an indoor space like this, when you make a lot of noise, it reverberates. Keep that in mind, because I want to note that most of us did not get through college alone. We get help from family, from friends, from professors, from mentors, fellow students, sometimes even strangers. Graduates, if there is someone in this room who helped you through, would you please stand, face them, and let them hear your appreciation now? If you are one of the family members, friends, professors, mentors, and fellow students, please let your graduates hear from you now. See, that's better indoors, isn't it? I want to do one more. I'm going to try not to choke up because at the college that I attended, they have a ritual. People who are the first in their family, I'm going to choke up, it's too late. People who are the first in their family to graduate are asked to stand. And I'd like to do that today. If anyone here is the first in your family to graduate, please stand. Thank you. Now I'd like to continue listening. I would like us to listen together to completely random people. I'm active on social media, and as some of you know, a few days ago, on your behalf, I put out a call on Twitter. I wrote, I am preparing for a college commencement speech for the University of Minnesota at Morris. What would you tell someone who is graduating this weekend? I received hundreds of suggestions, and some of them were not even from Elon Musk. I have culled what I believe to be 10 of the best suggestions. Number 10, don't crowdsource content. <laughs> Number nine, spend less time on smartphones. Number eight, oh, yeah, go ahead, all right. Number eight, move to a warmer climate. <laughs> number seven, this was a suggestion, one of the suggestions, number seven, quote, you are America's most valuable resource. Have you seen what this country does to natural resources? <laughs> Flee. Number six, quote, thanks to chat GPT, you might be better off as a plumber. <laughs> Ow. Number five, I love this suggestion. Drive to the Dairy Queen in Starbuck, Minnesota. It's a classic. <laughs> I've told people that. Um, I told my friend Jennifer that. She's like, oh no, it's a really good Dairy Queen. It's like, <laughs> you don't get it. Number four. Take big risks, not with your health, but with your heart. Number three, oh, yeah. Number three, vote. Number two, Sunday is Mother's Day. And number one was a single word 
I-K-I-G-A-I. -I -I. And I thought this was a typo or a butt dial. And then I looked it up, and it turns out ikigai, according to the internet, is a Japanese concept referring to a sense of purpose, which is a good theme for a graduation speech. Graduates, I'm from the Midwest. I grew up in Indiana. When I finished high school, I wanted to go as far away from Indiana as I could imagine. So I did go to college in Kentucky, <laughs> which really was as far as I could imagine at that time. Um, I'd grown up in suburban Indianapolis, and I was in coal mining country. It turned out to be a very different place. Later, I moved again, spending my junior year in New York City, which for me was like a foreign exchange. And then I went to work as a journalist, which allowed me to travel the world, and I have visited places that are generally not vacation destinations. Places where the hotels are not usually full. Places where the lights flicker out, or you hear the thud of drone strikes, or you wonder when you go to the airport if they're going to let you leave. Years ago, in Iran, I had an Iranian interpreter, and he said he was trained for two careers. He was trained to work with journalists like me, and he was also trained to be a tour guide at ancient sites. And he told me this gave him job security. When times are good, tourists come. When times are bad, you come. If I come to your city, it is very often a bad sign of bad news. And now here I am in Morris. <laughs> I don't come to offer you advice, because who am I to give you advice? But I do want to say what I hope for you graduates. I hope you'll go out into the world. Some of you may travel far, some may not travel far at all, but I hope you have all the experiences you can. Doesn't matter if you go to China or to the Dairy Queen and Starbucks, I hear it's good. Or just go home and look after your mom. Look around at the changing of the seasons and the faces of the people you meet. Try to know the story of the place where you live and the stories of the people in it. So I hope you'll go out into the world, and I hope you will always learn, as the chancellor said. I'm still learning how to do my job after many, many years. My job is about people, you know, listening to them and understanding them and questioning them and then trying to explain them to other people. There is an infinite variety of human experiences, and I never expect to reach the end. So I hope you find work that allows you to make new discoveries, and if your work does not allow for those new discoveries, I hope you go AWOL and find them on your own, graduates. I hope you'll always listen. Some of you in this class are surely parents, or you've taken care of children, and so you know that kids can have big emotions, they like to be independent, they may be defiant, or do totally irrational things, even say very harsh things, but you also learn that if you listen carefully, you may hear what's really bothering a child, and you'll understand what to do. Graduates, I'm here to tell you that grown-ups are exactly the same way. I hope you'll always laugh. The poet Langston Hughes said he was laughing to keep from crying. Laughter means you're not defeated, so no matter how bad things, to get you, things may get, you are allowed to laugh any way that you can. Dark humor is okay. I was told a knock-knock joke by one of your professors earlier today. Knock-knock jokes are cool. Dad jokes are fine. <laughs> Fart jokes, totally fine. <laughs> My 18-year-old a few days ago told me this joke. How did the lost hiker find his way home? By trail and error. I thought that would go over better. I'm sad, but... <laughs> but graduates, as you move forward, by trail and error, seeking ikigai, I hope you will also walk with a spirit of optimism. You've grown up in times of war, financial crisis, pandemic, and political division. You've had good reason to wonder if your elders would wreck the world before you could get it, but you've reached graduation today before your elders quite managed to do that. 
Your elders weren't quite competent enough to wreck it, it turns out. And the even better news is that they've definitely left you with plenty of work to do. There's better news still. And it's that the troubles of our time may be signs of progress. It's true that our country feels divided and there are many reasons, but one reason is that more voices are heard today. It was easier to have a united country when fewer people had a voice. I'm proud to hear from Dylan, who has insisted on having a voice. Our country feels divided on issues of race, and one reason is that racism used to be much more widely accepted. Today, it is more widely contested. That is a good thing. We worry about the, yep, you can applaud that. We worry about the power of technology, and we should, but it's partly because technology has advanced so greatly. We worry about fighting climate change because we now understand what it is. You can applaud that too. Sometimes our mistakes lead us to a better way, and I think the evidence is on this campus. We've heard several times today of the reference of the boarding school that was the beginnings, the origins of this university. Young people were educated, but also separated from their families and the cultures of their ancestors, which is a humbling story for me to come here and learn. Humbling because the people who ran that school surely thought they were doing good work at the time. It fell to other people and to later generations to challenge that and name their mistakes. Someday, future generations may look back and judge things that we thought were good at the time. It's good to be humble, I think. But the story of that school is also inspiring because of what later generations have built on that foundation. A university grew here where people of all races learn and prepare to explore the world. Graduates, I'm eager to learn what you build for yourself, for your community, for your country, and for the world. Thank you and good luck to you.